Hello there and welcome back to the High B Buzz. My name is Gamera Too, and today's guest needs no introduction, but we'll do our best anyway. He's a Hibs legend who recently returned to the club, which you may have heard about. Martin Boyle has played over 250 games for Hibernian, scoring 62 goals. And his incredible transfer back to Hibs in August, uh, he made a dramatic second debut with a late equaliser in the Edinburgh Derby. He's a massive fan's favourite and he joins us now to discuss his move back to Edinburgh and how he settled back to life in the capital. Martin, how was that introduction for you? How does that sound? That was all right. Apart for the legend bit, it was a bit, yeah. it was a bit too much. <laughs> well, you're certainly you've got the makings of a legend in the future now that you're, you're back. But tell us about how it feels to be back playing in green and white again. How does it, it feel that first that whirlwind weekend almost when you came back? What was that like? Yeah, it felt amazing. Um, probably the best feeling I've had on a football pitch. Um, in terms of returning and family all watching and and stuff like that, obviously the the ovation I got and you know the buzz that the stadium had um, it was very special for me and obviously the impact that I made. Considering I hadn't really done anything for the the two months that I was off, um, so yeah, it was it was kind of special and yeah, it was a it was an emotional weekend, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it and you know luckily I've managed to kick on a little bit and you know I'm getting fitter and stronger as the weeks go on. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that weekend, and, or maybe before that, when did you actually realise that the move to Hibs might be back on, and how did those kind of talks come about? Uh, I don't really know. I think it was kind of late on. I um, went on holiday with the family to Orlando, and I was speaking to my agent. Obviously, there was kind of things progressing, maybe not mostly Hibs, but as soon as I knew they were interested in that maybe a potential deal could get done and I had to kind of wait off in my end and um, you know kind of hold off and going back to my former club um, and yeah it kind of as the days went on it and it kind of kicked off a little bit and obviously I spoke to the manager as well and you know it, it showed you know he was really keen to bring me in and and obviously I was keen to come back, but we just kind of had to make a deal happen. Um, it's not as straightforward, you know, there was a lot of things that had to be done, and especially on the Saudi end. Um, you know, they obviously had to terminate my contract and stuff like that, and the fees had to be agreed, and, you know, it was, my head was all over the place. Um, but yeah, obviously it came down to the Friday before we played the derby, and it, it managed to get done. Obviously I'd signed the night before, but it could have still been... He could have still broke down, mm -hmm. um, so we kind of had to keep that a little bit secret. But yeah, thankfully it got it got done, and manager picked up the phone and asked if I fancy being on the bench. Mm -hmm. And then, so when, when you're in, in Saudi, I know when you left Hibs initially, you said it was it wasn't goodbye; it was see you later. Was that always something that you thought about that you might return to Hibs one day? Yeah, obviously I've always classified this as my home. You know, my family are settled here. Even my family in Aberdeen love coming down and seeing it. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a club where my family is and, and obviously my wife plays for the Hibs women and it's our home. Um, obviously I didn't, I knew I'd hopefully come back if they still wanted me one day, but I didn't realise it'd be that soon. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of it's kind of panned out quite well. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed, you know, my time away. It was something different, it opened up my eyes and, you know, I can look back and say that I've done it. Um, but yeah, like I say, I've got admirations to come back and play here and obviously with the World Cup and stuff coming up um, yeah I had, to, I had to look into that and yeah this is a place where I, I seen me play my best football. Mm -hmm. What's it been like being back in with the lads as well as a few new faces and a few of some of your favourite faces as well what's it like being back with Porto? Yeah obviously it's great to be back with Porto I've never never uh, not been in touch with him he always FaceTimed me when I was away and stuff so I think he's been missing me um, you know, a lot of the people have seen he's, he's perked right up since I've been back. Um, but yeah, like it's been good, obviously. It was good to make the impression that I did coming on and make an impact that I did to show people that I'm, that I'm capable in the dressing room. And obviously I'm not here to hang around and be, you know, sitting on the bench for a while. You know, I want to earn that, that jersey and hopefully it can, uh, uh, can determine other people, you know, that you know, when, when you get that opportunity, you have to take it. And yeah, obviously I hadn't met a lot of them. There's a lot of fresh faces, but it's been good. Yeah, I've seen a lot of characteristics from a lot of people and yeah, they seem like a good bunch. Um, but ultimately, it's not about that. It's what they do, the, 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 how they train and what they do on the pitch on a Saturday. So that's, uh, that's 
probably more so how they'll be judged. <laughs> was it like, like you said, you, you kind of came on, on, on the Saturday straight in onto the bench for the game against Hearts on the Sunday. What's it like playing with players that you, you haven't even met before and you're thrown on and have to make an impact with people that you never played with before? What's that like? Yeah, it was kind of weird because obviously I knew the people that were still here when I left. I mean, when I walked in the dressing room, it felt like I hadn't been away, but then obviously going around to introduce myself to other boys, it was obviously different. Um, but yeah, they, they seemed nice, they welcomed me in. Um, just like any other person that you know that I've signed, we always welcome them in, so that's been good. And I knew all the staff that was here, and obviously meeting up with the the manager and stuff. So I kind of kind of felt like I hadn't left. Obviously, it was a brief spell away, but yeah, obviously it was good. And obviously, I didn't really know much names until I started training the the following week. But yeah, obviously, it, like I could go in a quiet room and have a conversation with somebody. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's that's kind of guy I am, and luckily I've settled in quite well again. Mm -hmm. In terms of that game as well, just going back to, you mentioned there was a bit of expectations because you hadn't had a, a, a pre-season, you hadn't played a game since, you know, with Australia back, back in June. Did you feel that there was that expectation for you to come on and to make an impact? Yeah, I think, obviously there was a big buzz in me coming back, so obviously the expectation levels and my performances have to be high every week. I'm at a big club, I know that, and they have to be high. You know, it's the standard of this football club and... That's that's how it's, it's got to be. Um, obviously, playing in that game, it was probably the, the first time in my career that I've been nervous. Um, I mean, looking back at semi-final against Rangers, wasn't nervous. World Cup qualifiers, take it with a pinch of salt. But I think, obviously, the return I had and everyone was buzzing. I think that was the first time I was nervous in a game. And, yeah, obviously, I think it was because I knew I hadn't, you know, touched the ball or done anything. Uh, and, obviously... I wouldn't say thrown in the deep end because I knew I took care of my body over the summer, but it was kind of, you know, hadn't done much as in match fitness. So, yeah, obviously I didn't want to come on and have a shocker. Mm -hmm. I probably did until I scored the goal. So, luckily I did. It kind of made up for it. But, yeah, look, everything fell into place. And, like I say, it's it's time for me to uh, kick on and, and, and do more. Yeah, you mentioned the goal. And I remember speaking after the game, you you talked through the celebration. You were just kind of running and you were saying that you could you could run forever when, when it went in. What was that, that feeling like to, to have made such an impact in such a big game? Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, like I say, just obviously I thought it was just going to be getting led onto the pitch and unveiled, but to obviously come in and make an impact in the way the game went, um, it was kind of special. Um, obviously it would have been better with three points, but you could see what it meant to people. Like it's, it's a last minute equalise against your rivals. It's, it's a big deal, let's be honest. Um, and obviously the return, it kind of made it sweeter. Um, but yeah, like I say, if that if the bottom gate was open, I would have probably kept running. Mm -hmm. Joe Neal done pretty well to catch me. And then after that, I just, that was knackered. So luckily that was the final kick of the ball where I was finished. But yeah, obviously look, the impact was the most important thing. And obviously not uh, dropping complete points was another thing. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, obviously wanted to come back and play in big games. You saw yourself a future playing in Scotland. Um, and your family's here, Rachel, as well. What was it like being back, being closer to them again? And I know you've got um, a family here as well. Was that a big part of your decision to come back? Yeah, of course it is, because obviously my, my wife's due in September. So that was, that was obviously an important thing. So if it was away, I would obviously miss that. And I'd have to schedule flights to come back and, and all that. So yeah, it's obviously, like I say, as soon as I knew Hibs were interested and the club were willing to sell me, then yeah, it kind of fell into place. And it was the only place ideally that I wanted to come. Um, so yeah, I'm quite lucky that it's worked out that way. And they've, they've obviously they've took the trust in me, me coming back. And like you say, I've got I feel like I'm still in the peak of my career. I've got more, a lot more to give, mm -hmm. and hopefully I can. How was it when you were away? How difficult was it being away with from your family and and friends and people back in Scotland? Was that something that you struggled with, or was it something you kind of got used to? Or um, I think it was just the way I left. Um, Obviously, I said goodbye, but it wasn't obviously officially confirmed. So I thought after the international camp that I was coming home to obviously say good my, my goodbyes and pack a bag. Um, obviously, it didn't work out that way. I had to fly straight from Melbourne to to Saudi Arabia. Um, I think I had a small suitcase with three pairs of boxers and a t-shirt in it. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't much to live off, but yeah, that was it. That was my life for the next six months. Obviously, I managed to get home a few times. Um, but obviously I had internationals in between that, so it was kind of hard. Obviously my daughter growing up, 
wife being pregnant away, obviously can't physically show your support, but being mm -hmm. on FaceTime and stuff like that, it was, yeah, it was kind of repetitive. The days were just going by, they were kind of flying by. And obviously, I, I enjoyed my football out there. Obviously, it didn't mm -hmm. pan out the way I wanted it to by the end of the season. Obviously, I had the, um, you know, the experience of playing in the Asian Champions League, which was great um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, obviously, it was it was lonely being away mm -hmm. uh, myself, but at the same time, I'm, I made some decent friends out there. Uh, the club were they were great with me. They helped me in any way they could, and yeah, I, mm. I enjoyed it. In my role covering Hibernian FC home and away, I'm constantly using my phone, tablet, or laptop and I know the importance of staying safe online. That's why I use NordVPN. By using NordVPN, this protects my personal data and bank details from hackers and gives me peace of mind whilst traveling and working on the move. Thanks to our great partnership with NordVPN, you can grab your exclusive deal, NordVPN's online security package with four months free by going to nordvpn.com forward slash highbees or use the code HIBS to get the huge discount. It's completely risk-free with NordVPN's money-back guarantee. Talk to us about, about the football out there then. How did it compare to the, the Scottish League in terms of standard and, and the style and that kind of thing? Was it something that you adapted quickly to or did it take a bit of time? Um, I think my first game, yeah, adapted quite well. Obviously, I scored and got an assist, so it kind of started off, kind of set the bar really high. Mm -hmm. um, thought it was a dream start. Then obviously we were kind of up and down, you know, we'd lose, win, lose, draw, and then kind of wasn't um, consistent enough. And then obviously, like I say, we played in the Champions League and, you know, we managed to top the group. You know, we played against a team from uh, Qatar, Al Saad, who had Santi Carzola, Andre, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And so that was a great experience. Um, so yeah, it was, yeah, I think it was, it was really good. Like I say, I've you not, know, I took the opportunity and I went and I've experienced it and it's something I don't regret. Uh, and ultimately, I think the football, yeah, it's a bit more competitive here. Mm -hmm. um, probably a bit more rough here, mm -hmm. tackles and probably say more competitive. Um, and obviously the atmospheres, um, yeah, they, that's exactly what you miss from here, the atmosphere. I mean, I, I think sometimes I went away, I, I missed getting abused and that, it was, it was kind of a little things you miss from home but yeah over there it was uh, there was a lot of technical players and you know there was a lot of I think it was hard because of the climate mm -hmm. you know it was tough I mean if you do a couple of sprints in the game you <laughs> you kind of got to watch out and you've got to maintain what you're doing you know probably here I'm running around like a headless chicken because mm -hmm. the climate's all right but over there you know, you're gonna need a defibrillator after 10 right. minutes <laughs> so, uh, but I enjoyed it like it was good um, settled in well made some good teammates Obviously went through a few managers in my time, mm -hmm. um, but you no, know, they were all brand new, and like I say, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think you were going to come out with "I miss being abused," but there ah, you, go. <laughs> you miss that. You miss you obviously miss the banter and stuff from back here. You know, you miss, you miss that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You miss the atmosphere, like you say. You got a Tyne Castle, even at home, I brought Celtic Park. You know, the mm -hmm. atmospheres. Um, were the, were the atmospheres just completely different over there in terms of? numbers watching the passion that can yeah obviously look, they, they love their football you know mm. every night they're watching football on their phone or something different and i think obviously the atmosphere is kind of a bit timid you know there's a lot of music in the background and stuff playing but it's not the exact same i think our fan base was kind of a little um as well but in terms of like going away at al halal and stuff you know they had about 40 50 000, mm. which was great but you wouldn't have that every week you wouldn't have you know this the same buzz mm -hmm. um, as you would here out with the football then when you're over there, did, what else did you do to kind of, in your free time to keep yourself occupied? You said you got on well with your, with your teammates, but what did you do at, off the football pitch? Um, mostly PS5, Netflix, that's about it. Um, it was a different lifestyle in terms of like, they would stay up through the night. So mm -hmm. I'd probably go to my bed at like five, six in the morning mm -hmm. and I'd wake up at like five in the afternoon. I'd right. go to training for six. And then it'd be the same cycle. Yeah. So obviously it's a bit more back to front. Shops don't open till later and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if if I could be bothered after training, I'd probably go for a coffee and um, stuff like that. And if I had a day off, I was only an hour away from rehab. Mm -hmm. So they had some nice shopping malls there, some nice Japanese restaurants and that with teammates, um, which I, I thoroughly enjoy. Mm -hmm. So um, 
yeah, obviously I was driving over there, that was a bit different. Yeah. <laughs> a bit chaotic, but uh, yeah, it was fine. Like I say, everyone was set up for me and, you know, they made it, they made it as good as can be. Mm-hmm. Did you watch anything good on Netflix then? Um, I've, to be fair, I was just watching replays of what I've watched before, The Office <laughs> US. <laughs> Uh, At least you know what you're going to get when you do that. Yeah, like I say, I've been watching loads of movies and um, I was watching a lot of football as well. Obviously, Mm -hmm. I've watched all the Hibs games. I'm writing in my Formula One now after watching Drive to Survive. Mm So, yeah, I kept myself busy Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then, obviously, a big part of when you were over there and also after was the international career with Australia and, and that whole World Cup qualifying campaign. How was it balancing the two of them and, and then talk us through the, the actual World Cup, you know, the playoff that you, that you participated in and what that was like? Um, I think in terms of coming away, I mean, if you leave from here, it's a lot, much longer flight. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not ideal. Um, so you need to stop off at Dubai and then fly somewhere else, etc. But we're quite lucky because the, the playoffs were in Doha. Yeah. So obviously I was only an hour flight. Um, we had played, I think it was like the first day of Friday night and I managed to, was like one of the first ones I'd managed to fly over. So it was only an hour flight, so it was handy getting in the camp. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, obviously, we had two games, we really, against UAE and Peru and, you know, they went straight knockouts and we knew what was on the line. Um, obviously, we managed to to beat UAE, it was a tough game. Um, I think we played, played pretty well. Um, so managed to get an assist, but then we conceded about a minute and a half later. So obviously, mm. you go from there to there, and it's uh, uh, you know football can change quick. But we managed to hold on, and uh, we, we scored a goal in the last ten minutes. Um, and yeah, we, we kind of knew that you know this is a real chance to go to the World Cup. We know we had Peru on the line, and I think it was just back to the drawing board of training, recovering, and and we went again. And I think if you look at it, you know I think not a lot of people fancied us to qualify. Mm-hmm. You know, there was about six, seven thousand Peru fans in the stadium. Kind of overwhelming the noise they made, the anthem. It was, uh, it was kind of, kind of special. At the same time, it was good to listen to. And I had my dad and my uncle fly over to watch mm-hmm. me for the first time in Australia. I had my wife Rachel. She came over. Um, so that that was special. And yeah, obviously went out there and. I've almost knocked us out of the World Cup with my penalty. <laughs> so it could have went completely different. I was going to be my next question. I was waiting to be Scottish again, but now I'm back being Aussie. But yeah, it was, um, like I say, it was after that penalty. I mean, you've got to be brave enough to step up in those mm-hmm. those positions. Um, and obviously, I knew I was first up. You know, I took a lot of penalties for Hibs at the same time. Obviously, I missed my last one, which wasn't ideal. Um, but yeah, you've got to be brave. I felt like I struck it well. Goalie made a good save. And then you kind of just want the, the world to swallow you up, mm-hmm. um, which is not great. But I think what Graham Arnold, the manager, has installed in that team is that we never give up. You know, we're like a, a band of brothers in there. Mm-hmm. We're, we're a great group of lads. And as soon as I went back, one of the boys said that, look, don't worry, we'll, we'll get you out of this. And luckily we did. We mm-hmm. managed to do that. The goalie was a, was a hero at the end. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me that you weren't nervous for that game then. You're saying that you're only nervous for coming on in the dark. Were you not nervous going to that World Cup playoff final? I wasn't, no. Nah. going up to, to take the penalty? No, nah, I wasn't really, because obviously I'd, I know I know I'm a decent striker of the ball, and I don't know if I can hit it well. And I, I mean, I know in training I was going that way every time, and mm-hmm. obviously uh, Matt Ryan's a top goalkeeper, and you know, I just managed to score against him, so I kind of knew where I was going in the game. I installed that belief in myself that I was going that way, and if you... If you know in your mind you're going to change it, then mm-hmm. you're going to doubt yourself. So, yeah, I knew if I could strike it cleanly enough that you know, I'd have a chance of scoring, but I felt like I did. Goalie made a good save. He's obviously been doing his homework. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So what, what, about, um, what about the 24 hours after that, after that game? <laughs> Talk to them. Did you, did you forget your clothes that time as well? <sighs> no comment, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, obviously. There's been a few photos that I've posted myself, they kind of speak for themselves. Um, yeah, we kind of parted hard. Um, yeah. It's not often you qualify for a World Cup and the age I am, I might not be able to do it again. So I kind of milked it for everything it was. Um, I'd done the same when we won the Scottish Cup here. Went on a mad, a mad bender. Um, yeah, my family won't love me for it, but look, it's, it's memories, making memories mm-hmm. at the end of the day. And also, we spent the night with families and that. And, my wife had to fly her away that morning, so I just continued to go. Mm-hmm. 
to go on and yeah, obviously I just had my kit on because we thought we were getting beers after the game and obviously you can only get in hotels so I think all the guys agreed like that's it, <laughs> no shower, straight back, Yeah, yeah. we'll get back on it and, and we did um, and we enjoyed it, yeah we enjoyed it forever and it was worth, it's a special moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, How did the two celebrations compare, Scottish Cup 2016 win and the World Cup qualification? Uh, probably different. I mean, I, I mean, the Scottish Cup, I completely milked that because I didn't even play. <laughs> I mean, I played in the semi, I scored a penalty in the semi final, but yeah, obviously I've got the medal on that. But it's something that you, you can look back and say that you've achieved, you've done, but obviously participating in the game, it was obviously like you'd like to, it's different. Um, but obviously playing, you know, near enough every single qualifier, mm -hmm. um, playing all the games and, you know, actually being a part of it. Um, Minus a penalty miss, but yeah, obviously being a part of it and the journey that it was, yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely the, the mm -hmm. best one. Coming back from watching Hibs home or away and want dinner delivered to your doorstep, why not use Uber Eats? Whether you fancy a curry, a burger, a Chinese or something a little bit different, Uber Eats has you covered. Following our partnership with Uber Eats, we've got a great deal for all Hibernian FC supporters. Use the code Hibs Eats 10 for £10 off your first three orders on Uber Eats. And then I guess looking ahead, we've got the World Cup to look forward to this um, this November. Was that a big part of the reason you came back to Hibs to get, you know, some a lot of competitive football going into that and, you know, play at a, a high standard? And is that something that you're really looking forward to this year? Yeah, of course, obviously we got relegated and we haven't played the, the Saudi League too. I don't know the standard, but I think obviously when I knew they were interested in coming back, I knew that um, you know the standard here is very high. And there's a lot of Australians over here anyway. You know, there's a lot of boys over here, and there's a lot of top players. And I knew, I knew the league. I know it's competitive. Um, mm -hmm. and like you say, this, the, the club speaks for itself. So I knew it was ideally what I wanted to do. And obviously, if I'm playing against you know, much higher standard and I know I've got a better chance of going to the World Cup. Obviously, I need to be on my game, I need to be performing mm -hmm. to be selected, um, first and foremost. So, yeah, obviously I've managed to, have to get off to a good start. You know, can, obviously individually I've not really done much. Um, I'm still getting up to speed, but yeah, so I've kind of took off where I wanted to be and hopefully I can get selected in the next internationals. And yeah, obviously that leads into the World Cup, so obviously it'd be be great for me, great for my family, and obviously great for you know someone at Hibs, um, you know, representing someone yeah. at the World Cup. In terms of Hibs, then, since you come back, what are your aspirations for your your third stint essentially here? Um, is it is it goals, is it trophies? What what are you hoping to achieve during your time here again? Yeah, I mean, always. I mean, as a winger and attacker, you always base yourself on goals and assists. So obviously, I want to be doing that. You always want to be creating chances for your teammates. Um, you obviously want to be a good team player, and that's all me what I want to do. Like I say, I've been asked this many times. I don't really set myself any targets. Um, kind of just work hard. You know, kind of a clown and a joker around the place. But when I step over that line, it's nothing but serious. Um, but yeah, I don't really set myself targets. Mm -hmm. If I'm honest here, I kind of just like to take it game by game and and achieve what I can. Um, Obviously, if we are to achieve something, it'll be nice to, you know, get the Europa League back. Um, you know, obviously, win a cup would be ideal, it'd be nice. Um, but we know it's, you know, it's difficult. You know, it's probably every club's ambition to do that in a season. And you know, I mean, I feel like the stature of the club we are, we should be, you know, we should be um, trying to aim that for that every season. So, yeah, probably say that. Mm -hmm. In terms of the current team, then that Hibs, how does it? How is it working with the new players and how does it compare to some of the previous teams that you've been a part of? Yeah, I'd probably say it's a much younger squad. Mm -hmm. there's, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of talented boys in there, but I think they're a bit raw as well. Um, probably just like me, when I first came in, um, you know, I had, wouldn't say I had all the attributes, but I had raw pace and I was, you know, I'd maybe coached in a different way and maybe a, a little bit of time to adapt. and. You know, you start to gradually pick up and kick on, and yeah, obviously, a lot of young boys have came over from abroad and might might need that little push, and obviously a bit of coaching, and but ultimately they'll need time to settle in as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you could be selfish enough and say that you're demanding more from them straight away, but you you know how 
hard it could be. Obviously, I, I know myself, I've just met abroad and mm -hmm. you know, it can be difficult. But um, ultimately, ultimately, we know as the boys that have been here and like myself, we will we'll help them in any which way we can to settle them in. You know, if that's helping them around the city or helping them lifestyle or anything like that, we know mm -hmm. we'll help them and even on the pitch. How have you adapted then to, over your years at, at Hibs, you've obviously grown as a player and as a person as well. Have you adapted to, you know, taking maybe a more leadership role this time around now that you are one of the more senior members? Nah, not interested. <laughs> not interested. Fancy it. Nah, <laughs> nobody respects me around here. They just think I'm a clown. <laughs> well, on the pitch, surely they respect you. Nah, nah. I mean, I'm not one to go around shouting at players and that. I normally just do try to do my talking on the pitch. Mm -hmm. I mean, if something has to be said, I'll say it, but whether they're going to listen to me, five or eight, so they're not going to listen to me. But, uh, obviously, I've got the experience of being here, knowing what it's like to play for the club and that. You know, I can g give a bit of knowledge and stuff like that, but... Nah, maybe in a few years. Yeah. Yeah, I still see myself as a young boy. And I don't want to put myself in that old category. Uh, I mean, if the manager comes to me and he says he wants to put me in a leadership role, then, yeah, happy days, but I can't see it happening any time soon. <laughs> but, yeah, if I, I'm, I'm very approachable. But mm. like you say, I'm, I'm normally a clown around the place, so uh -huh. I, like to, I like to keep people on their toes. You mentioned your, your chats to the gaffer and, um, and how you spoke to him when you were, when you were coming in. and. Um, what have you what have you enjoyed about working with him and his methods and getting to used to that style? Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, it's been good, straightforward. Um, I like the vision of what he wanted to play, um, attacking football, playing the front foot. Ideally for me, you know, that's it's a no-brainer. It's mm -hmm. exactly as a player, exactly what you want to hear. Um, so yeah, obviously, tactically still try to get used to what he's wanting to do. All the specifics, you know, I missed all that pre-season. In fact, I missed the, well, the whole of pre-season. Um, mm. So obviously there's still bits and bobs that I need to to catch up on. But yeah, I think my playing style will never really change. I like to take the ball, I like to drive and you know, commit players, create chances. Um, and ideally that's what he wants. So, you know, I fit the bill. Mm -hmm. One final thing, because I know we're, we're running out of time, is I wanted to ask about your, your return to Edinburgh and um, and the Hibs fans as well, because you've been back what, a, a month or so. Have you had much interaction with the fans since you've been back here? Um, I don't think I have actually. Um, Not seen them about the, the city or in the festival. I, I mean, I live just outside the town, so I obviously see a lot. And yeah, obviously, the big thing about that is probably you don't need to because you see it on social media. You mm -hmm. know, social media kind of blew up, and they're all delighted to see me back, which is great. And you know, thankful I've gave them. You know, thankful I've kind of hit the ground running with two goals. Um, obviously, I do. I want to be doing more, but yeah, I can't thank their support enough. Um, for what they do for me and my family and obviously the commitment that they show at the club and they come out in their numbers as well, which mm -hmm. is brilliant. And yeah, hopefully I can continue to give them more memories on the pitch and keep producing. Mm -hmm. How much is, does that impact the team when the, when the fans are there and they're all behind them and it's sold out, he sold, how much impact does that have on you as players? Of course it is. I mean, that's, that's why you get the buzz of playing football in front of that atmosphere. Um, for me, getting people off their seats is nothing better. Um, even if it doesn't lead to anything, but if you get that excitement, I know when I was a young boy, when watching teams and that, and you know, get off your seat and you, you like you like what you see and stuff like that. So yeah, obviously the manager wants to play exciting football and attacking on the front edge and score goals, and hopefully we can gradually bring that um, in Easter Road and obviously our way form as well, which you know needs to be improved because um, the numbers are coming out, the fans are coming out in their numbers, and obviously what we've produced away from home so far has not been as good as what we want it to be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they're spending all that money to travel and, you know, we need to make it worth their while and yeah, we, we we need to we know that as well. So we don't take that for granted. Mm -hmm. Well I could take up another hour of your, your time but we're not going to. But it's a pleasure as always. Thanks for talking to us and best luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.